Good morning, church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Regina Harrison from Woodbine First United Methodist Church, and I welcome you to our online worship service this Trinity and Peace with Justice Sunday. If you are visiting with us, we hope that you will join us again very soon. I would like to begin with some announcements. Earlier today, I posted on Facebook and emailed the information on our Iowa Annual Conference reentry plan for when we can start meeting again in our building. Please read that, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call me or email me. I will be happy to discuss that with you. Last Sunday, we had our first drive-up communion at the church, and we had 43 participants. I think that is a fabulous number, and we are going to do this again. July 5th, Sunday, I realize that's 4th of July weekend, but I think we'll have enough folks, so there'll be more information forthcoming about that. The Hive group continues to meet on Tuesday evenings on Zoom at 6.30, and there will be more information prior to that on Facebook and in your email, so please join us for that. Our special music this morning is Let There Be Peace on Earth, Sue Benedict, soloist. It is beautiful. Thank you, Sue. I want to begin our service this morning by reading excerpts of a blog written by Bishop Lori Haller titled, Breathe on Us, Breath of God, in response to the death of George Floyd and the issue of racism. Breathe on us, breath of God, fill us with life anew, that we may love the way you love and do what you would do. Breathe on us, breath of God, until our hearts are pure, until our will is one with yours to do and to endure. On the day the Lord God made earth and sky, before any wild plants appeared on the earth, and before any field crops grew, because the Lord God hadn't yet sent rain on the earth, and there was still no human being to farm the fertile land, though a stream rose from the earth and watered all the fertile land, the Lord God formed the human from the topsoil of the fertile land and blew life's breath into his nostrils. The human came to life. Breathe on us, breath of God, till we are wholly thine. The same breath of God that breathes life into you and me continues to create and recreate and offers to each of us the power of the Holy Spirit. Breathing is a powerful and involuntary instinct. But what happens when entire groups of people cannot breathe? The United Methodist Church is very clear about the evil of racism. Racism is the combination of the power to dominate by one race over other races and a value system that assumes that the dominant race is innately superior to the others. Racism includes both personal and institutional racism. Personal racism is manifested through the individual expressions, attitudes, and or behaviors that accept the assumptions of a racist value system and that maintain the benefits of this system. Institutional racism is the established social, social pattern that supports implicitly or explicitly the racist value system. And that is found in um, the Book of Worship, United Methodist Social Principles. Breathe on us, breath of God, so shall we never die. The most important rituals of the United Methodist Church, among them baptism, confirmation, and church membership, include this question. Do you, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? In addition, the ordering of ministry liturgy at annual conference includes these words of responsibility and accountability from the examination of elders about to be ordained. To lead the people of God in obedience to Christ's mission in the world. To seek justice, peace, and freedom for all people. And to take a responsible place in the government of the church and in service in and to the community. My prayer is that, is that we will use this moment in history to be clear about and work toward the positive change that we are called to make in our world. That includes ensuring that all people, no matter the color of the skin, the language they speak, or where they live, are free to become who God created them to be, 
Only then will George Floyd not have died in vain. Freedom implies the responsibility to be empowered for good and create a more just and compassionate world. But live with you the perfect life for all eternity. May the words of African-American poet, novelist, fiction writer, and playwright Langston Hughes, Let America Be America Again, lead us into a future where all people have the opportunity to discover and use their gifts to make a positive difference in the world. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be, the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take back our land again, America. And Bishop Lori ends her post with a prayer. God of might and mercy, we confess to you our human struggle to live together as your beloved children on this earth and the deep harm we have caused by our refusal to create the land that never has been yet and yet must be the land where everyone is free. Purify our hearts, sharpen our senses, and give us the courage to embody the admonition to which you call us to accept the freedom and power you give us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Breathe on us, breath of God, till we are wholly thine, till all this earthly part of us glows with the fire divine. Amen. And I want to thank Bishop Lori for that blog post. It was fantastic. I have the music and the words for Breathe On Me, Breath of God, for the hymn for you to sing if you would like. Now will you join me in our call to worship? God in the Spirit, revealed in Jesus Christ, calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our Creator, that we may be one in divine love for the world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation, wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness, and so shall we. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends, and so shall we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people, despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace, and so shall we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts up the lowly, and so shall we. Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exalts when the wolf grazes with the lamb, and so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free. And so shall we. Will you join me in our opening prayer? We pray that someday an era will be broken, not in something or someone, but by each of humankind to in indicate peace, not violence. Someday, oneness with creation rather than domination over creation will be the goal to be respected. Someday, fearlessness to love and make a difference will be experienced by all people. Then the eagle will carry our prayer for peace and love, and the people of the red, white, yellow, brown, and black communities can sit in the same circle together to communicate in love and experience the presence of the great mystery in their midst. Someday can be today for you and me. Amen.
This is a prayer that was written by Wanda Lawrence of the Chippewa Indian tribe. An eagle in the Native American tradition is often a carrier of prayer. Next, we have the children's message by Barbie Schaefer. And you are free to watch that. And then we come to our scripture. Our first scripture this morning is found in Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. Speak out for those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. Our next scripture comes from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, we come to celebrate the great news of your love. Let this love be wrapped in justice and peace for all. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. As I said before, today is Trinity Sunday. It is the first Sunday after Pentecost, and it's also in the United Methodist Church, Peace with Justice Sunday. And Peace with Justice Sunday is a time that we have a special offering. So if you would like to give towards that, you can mark your checks with Peace for Justice Sunday. Thank you. How long, O oh Lord? I recently read an article that shared a great piece of advice for pastors. Do not attempt to explain the Trinity. Do not. It is an exercise in futility. Every attempt will fall short. Even if you found the perfect metaphor, even if the image you chose seems even to you to sum up the totality of the immensity that is Trinitarian experience, our Trinitarian experience of Almighty God, you've limited it somehow. Something will be left out. It is impossible to describe the mind and activity of God. Any attempt will reduce God to something our minds can grasp, and when we do that, we diminish the power and the glory of all that God is. The Trinity is one of those concepts that defies explanation. The only way we can describe God is in the way God describes God, through our relationship with him. The symbols of the Trinity are the triangle, um, Celtic knots you may have seen, and these symbols are inclusive yet diverse. They represent the unity of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we are given the perfect example of unity in the Trinity. Our desire to be more Christ-like calls us to be united united in Christ with all people amidst the diversity of our world. In our gospel lesson this morning, we read Jesus' last words to his disciples as he commissions them to go into the world and make disciples of all people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is also our commission as the church to make disciples. How do we make disciples? Can we make disciples? Make disciples in Greek is a single word meaning teach. And how do we teach? I love Bible studies, learning about God and sharing our thoughts together. 
but that is not our primary way to teach. I love to preach, but that is not our primary way to teach others. It isn't handing out a tract or going up to, the, to a stranger asking them if they're saved. We teach by how we live. There's a story about an Amish man who was asked, are you a Christian? He replied as he pointed down the street, you'll have to ask my neighbor. How true is that for us today? Are we living so that others, our neighbors, know that we are Christian? Despite the diversity of the world in which we live, do we strive to be united with our neighbors? In the last several days, our nation has experienced horrific pain and injustice. We are again forced to acknowledge America's deeply rooted racism. As those in the streets cry out for justice, we cannot pretend that we are dealing with a new or unique issue. We've had these conversations, these are familiar wounds, sins that we continue to commit and nurture. In the scripture I read earlier, Micah 6, 8, uh, the message translation is very understandable, and I would like to read that for you. But he's already made it plain how to live, what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to our neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. And also in the mes message, Proverbs 31 verses 8 and 9 read, Speak up for the people who have no voice, for the rights of all the down and outers. Speak out for justice. Stand up for the poor and destitute. Injustice, racism, oppression are not new to our world. We read about all this in our Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, have how the Israelites were enslaved, how people were held by the Romans as slaves. The injustices go throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament. So this is not something new to us. Unfortunately, it is prolific in our society in the year 2020. A whole world of people will decide who Jesus is by who we are. A whole world of people will decide who Jesus is by who we are. Ann Voskamp is one of my favorite Christian writers, and she wrote, When we re remain silent in the face of injustice, we loudly slap the face of God because the person being abused is the face of God. I want to tell you a story about two little boys I read about. This happened in 2017. The little boys' names are Jax and Reddy. Jax is a little white boy and Reddy is the little black boy. They're about five years old and they are in class together and they came up with a, a plan to fool their teacher. Jax, the little white boy, said to his mother, I want to get my hair cut just like Reddy's. Reddy had a buzz cut, very short hair. And he said to his mother, we want to trick our teacher. That way she won't be able to tell us apart. The innocence of children. So the mother took Reddy and Jax to the barber, and Jax got his hair buzzed just like Reddy. They were so excited that they could go to school the next day and trick their teacher because she wouldn't know who was who because of their haircut. Would that we could all be that way. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor and theologian and writer. He was held in a Nazi prison camp and was later hanged. Bonhoeffer wrote, We are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. I want to read that again. We are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. As Christians who desire to be like Christ, 
we cannot let the wheels of injustice, racism, or oppression continue to turn. We must break the systemic dysfunction that has, a, has been a pandemic in our land for generation after generation. But how do we break that cycle? What can we do? First, we can pray and ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom to know what we can do and what we should do. Then we need to speak out, whether it's within our own household, our church, our community, or our state. We need to speak out against these injustices of racism and oppression. Another thing we can do is donate. Donate to a cause that furthers the, um, to stop the, the racism and the violence that, that provides for people that need a help, a hand up help in their community and in their, um, their culture. We can donate. And there are many places that you can find online or in the paper where you can donate. What else can we do? I don't have all the answers, like I said last week, and I know you don't either, but we have some answers. Do we need to form groups um, that can talk about this and come up with ways that we can help? Do we need to contact uh, someone in our government and ask, where can we help? What can we do? There are many things that we can do, but the first thing we need to do is to do something. We must do something. But only by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, can we even attempt to make a change, to live as Christ would have us live, to do something. My friends, we must do something. Please pray about what you can do and what we as a church can do. Amen. Our joys and concerns this morning, we've had a couple of folks who have had surgery. We have one, Marley Jensen, that is going to have surgery on June 10th on her back, so please continue to remember her in your prayers. And I would also like you to please uh, continue to remember my sister-in-law, Donna, who is fighting cancer. Will you join me in prayer? God of love and mercy, you have given us stewardship to care for this wonderful planet and to care for our neighbors. We have been blessed with a variety of gifts and talents, and you call us to use them to help others. Open our hearts today to ministries of peace with justice. Embolden us to become part of this great cloud of witnesses who were unafraid to be your disciples. We think of so many in this church and in our lives who have gone before us, braving the difficulties presented by life. We name them in our hearts before you, grateful for their example. Please observe a few moments of silent prayer. We also name in our hearts those people who are ill, who have had surgery, who mourn, who feel lost and alone, those who are part of cultures of oppression and indignity. Help us to be those people who, by our example, will break those chains of poverty and burst open the doors that imprison their spirits. May we be your light in the darkness of injustice and oppression. Be with this church that it may be a true witness to Jesus Christ in all that we do. Almighty God, we offer our gifts in gratitude this morning, not for what you do in our lives, but for who you are in our lives. You are with us in the person of the Father, the God above us. You come to meet us as the Son, as God beside us. 
You empower us to do the work of kingdom building by the Holy Spirit, God within us, providing strength and boldness that we would never find on our own. May these gifts be tools that make the transformation of the world a reality. We pray these things in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now, with the confidence of children, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my friends, receive this benediction. It is a Franciscan benediction. Blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children, the poor and the blessed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.